It's so good to be with you again on the farm. Welcome to Shalom. It is a magnificent summer's day. There's a gentle breeze blowing. The sun is shining. There's not even a cloud in the sky. The dams are full of water. We've had a wonderful rainy season this uh, past year. And I just want you to sit back. I want you to relax. And I want you to take that cup of coffee or that cup of tea and listen to the Word of God. We go to the book of Psalms, and I'm going to read a verse, just one verse, and it is Psalm 84 and verse 10. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. Wow. You know, I've said the same thing. And uh, some people don't agree with me. I said, you can have all the crowns. I don't, I don't really want any crowns. I just want, I'm, I'm asking a big thing, of course. I just want to be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord when I get to heaven so I can gaze upon the beauty and the majesty of our Heavenly Father all the days of my life forever. That's what I want. Because wherever Jesus is, there's peace, there's tranquility, there's joy, there's hope. That's where I want to be. But you see, to be a doorkeeper, you have to be a servant. That's right. A doorkeeper is a person who opens the door for you to allow you to come in. If you go to one of those massive hotels in London, in England, like the Savoy Hotel, you'll see a gentleman standing outside with a top hat on and a tuxedo with tails, and he's immaculately dressed. And when the big limousine drives up, he goes and he opens the door and he lets the customers come out and he escorts them into the hotel. That is what a doorkeeper is. A doorkeeper is a servant. And if you want to be used by the Lord, you've got to be prepared to serve. Now, the other thing a doorkeeper does, he's very observant. He doesn't talk much. He's not supposed to talk at all, apart from to say, good morning, sir. Good morning, madam. Welcome to the hotel or wherever it might be. He's got to listen and he's got to look. Many of us are too busy talking. And that's why we're not learning anything. We need to serve. Now, if you remember, Joshua served Moses for 40 years, folks. That's almost a lifetime before he took the people into the promised land and took over from Moses. Elisha served Elijah. Elijah didn't even want him there. He told him a number of times, I don't want you anymore. He said, I'm not going to leave you. And then Elisha went one step further. He says, I want a double portion of the anointing which God has given you. And because he served and because he watched and he listened, when the chariot of fire took the man of God up into heaven, he picked up that cloak, remember, and he struck that river and he said, where is the God of Elijah? And of course, we know that the river Jordan opened and the people walked through. I want to say to you today, we need to start to listen. You know, we uh, have American horse trainers come out here and they teach us how to ride our um, American saddlers. When you go there and you pay your money, you keep quiet and you listen to him. If you don't, you're a fool. Because he takes your money and you learn nothing. <laughs> so be a good listener. Be a good doorkeeper. Jesus bless you and goodbye.